Hi you guys, it's Amy from Winterwood Studio and today I have something special. <laughs> this is the very first Sketchbox box that I've ever gotten in my entire life. This is the April 2023 box and the premium box and I have never tried this before. This isn't affiliated or sponsored or anything like that. I just wanted to try it and see what's inside because it looked like something fun and something to look forward to each month. So get something to drink and come on in and let's see what's in here and then let's do a demonstration drawing or painting. I don't know what's in here. So we'll do a demonstration of some sort with this box too. So come on in and let's see what's in here. Okay, so let's open this and see what's inside. I'm really excited. I've wanted this for forever. <laughs> I wanted to try it for a really, really long time. It's like Christmas. I don't even know what's in here. <laughs> right. It's got like some wrapping papery stuff in there. This is first, it's some little, you know what? I think this is gonna tell me what's in here, so I'm not gonna look at that yet. <laughs> All right. There is a little four by six art pad in here, and it says make sure to use talons, Pantone paper, and markers for optimal color. Hmm, interesting. I see some stuff. Huh, look at this. Pantone marker ink. I've heard of Pantone color swatches, but I didn't know they were like a brand. And it's marker ink and it looks like a pretty teal color in there. That's really pretty. Next we have, huh, look at that. Four Pantone markers in a really pretty spring-ish color scheme, huh? Yeah, very, like very pastel-y spring Eastery. Let's look at one of these a little closer. Okay, so it looks like there's a cap on both ends. So there's a fine point or a brush. I'd have to check. It's a brush. So there's a brush point on this end and oh, a chisel on this end. And I have no idea if this, if this is an alcohol or a water based. And then we have uh, a Princeton Art and Brush Company number four round brush. So that's nice. That'll be fun to try. It looks like it's a golden tackle on. So we'll have to test that out. And then there is a Faber Castile Grip 2001. It says HB two and a half pencil. And these little dots on here feel kind of like rubbery and grippy. Sorry, I had to close the curtain back there. I think it was messing with the light of the camera, so it's mostly closed. I didn't do a great job. The plant is caught in there, but you know. <laughs> um, so then I don't know how much it caught on here, but this is the grippy. It's got a grip, it says. It's the Faber-Castile Grip 2001, and it says it's a two and a half HB. And then there's a sticker uh, that says April 2023 with one of the markers on it. And now I th <clears throat> think it's time to look at these little papers that came with it. And then there was this little artist card in there with some info about the artist on the back. And I, if you want to read it, you can just pause the video here and read that for a second. So here is that side. And then this is this side where it tells what the supplies are. It tells a little bit about each of them. So it says Sketchbox exclusive launch part, part, I think they meant partner, but it says parter, with Royal Talons Pantone marker. And it says you're the first to get your hands on these brand new Pantone markers. Oh, well that's why I didn't know what they were. <laughs> that's why I'd never seen them before. When they hit stores, they will be available in 108 colors and are meticulously formatted to meet the universal language of color that Pantone provides. Each of these refillable markers come with two different nibs, a brush and a chisel. And then it doesn't say for the markers if they're alcohol or um, water-based. Let's take a look at this paper here. There are 10 sheets in here. 
It feels like a really, really smooth Bristol type paper. Like it feels almost exactly like my Strathmore 400 series smooth Bristol that I like to use for my ink. And it feels like about the same weight too. Very interesting. All right, why don't I move you over to the overhead setup here and we'll make something. Does that sound like an idea? All right, let's get going. Okay, you guys, I've got all the supplies here. I have a little uh, palette tray here and some water to try out some washes with this. And the first thing that I want to do is just swatch out all these materials. So I'm gonna take a sheet of this paper out. That tore out nice. And now let's try some of these supplies out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is try swatching the brushes. Okay, so, and I'm also wondering if these are water-based, if I can use these like I would watercolor markers. So we're gonna try that here in a second. Okay, so these colors aren't quite as pastel as I was thinking they were going to be, but they are still very pretty springish colors. Okay. Let's try these out. Okay, so once they're down, they do not re-wet. They don't act like a watercolor marker. So that is good to know. Okay, so I Googled it and they are water-based inks. So you can wet them off a palette and use them like a watercolor wash. So that is good to know. All right, so I'm just gonna do, I should have done that under that. Uh, oh well. <laughs> I'm gonna do uh, a wash of each of these to see what they look like. All right, and how about if I'm on top of things and I actually do the blue under the blue and the purple under the purple for the rest. <laughs> All right. Okay, so those make some pretty light washes. And last one, the purple. Oh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I skipped the pink. <laughs> Man, I'm not with it today. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> There's the pink. Okay. There we go. There are the washes. There's two purples. <laughs> All right. Now, let's take a look at this ink here. This does not look like the same color as this blue. It's clearly not the same color. So let's try the brush a little bit and see what it's like. Ooh, that's a pretty emerald green. Okay. Now let's try adding some water and treating it like a watercolor ink and see what happens. Okay. Okay, so this is kind of our color palette here that we're going to be working with. That's almost like a robin's egg blue there. All right. All right, now it's time to think about what to do. You know, one other thing I want to check is do they layer and get darker? So let's do a swatch here. Okay, so they do, it's looking like you can layer them to get them darker. We'll wait for it to dry just to double check, but it does appear to be getting darker. Okay, and then... Here. 
I'm going to use the chisel end, I think, just in case. Okay, so it didn't come off on the chisel end, so that's good. So if you want to layer like this light yellow over darker color, it's not going to ruin the tip of your marker. So that is good. How is this holding up to the water? All right. You know what? I am going to tape a piece of this down on a board and treat it like watercolor paper. It might buckle a little bit. We'll see what happens. Okay, you guys, I've got a little drawing all sketched out here and I am ready to go. I'm going to use my kneaded eraser to lighten up my sketch a little bit here. And for the very first layer, I'm gonna treat this like watercolor washes. I don't imagine this paper will, will hold a whole lot of watercolor wash paper washes it's uh you know i wouldn't use my bristol paper paper with a whole bunch of watercolor so we will just see what happens um i think i might treat this like a wash and then line i may use some of my own uh pigmas pigma microns i think just to We'll see. I haven't decided yet. So I didn't realize you couldn't see the whole palette when I was filming this. What I'm doing is just coloring with the marker right on the plastic palette and the pigment sort of beads up and then you can mix it with water to make your washes. You can even mix a couple swipes of different colored markers to mix the colors to make like a peach. Okay, we're gonna let that first layer dry. So what I'm doing here is I'm just coloring on the inside of this plastic well and then mixing it with a little water to make like a watercolor. With a piece of paper this small, you don't have a ton of room to do anything super detailed. Um, so right from the beginning, I planned for this to be kind of a loose, messy, fun watercolor piece. Um, so I'm not going to be doing tons of detail, although at the end I will go back in and do a little more detail on the chick itself. Um, but I kept the background flowy and loose and vibrant. Okay, I think to make a darker yellow color, I'm going to color mostly yellow on here with a little dab of the pink. And then I'm gonna mix that together. And let's check it on our scrap here. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so while we watch me work on this piece here, I wanted to talk a little bit about the ugly stage in art. Um, I often go through a stage that I think most people refer to as the ugly stage in my art where I start to feel like it's never going to come together and it's really ugly and I can't save it. And when I was first getting started, that would be the point at which I would throw it away and start something new. Um, and I've realized since then that you can't do that and that usually if you just push through the ugly stage, it comes out at the end. Um, it might not be your most favorite piece ever, but it's at least something that you can be happy with. Um, and I think a lot of new artists don't realize that everybody goes through those stages. And if you don't realize that, it can be really easy to feel discouraged and not want to continue. Um, and that's just not something you should do. You should just push through, keep going, and eventually, if you keep going, you'll find a point where you're happy with the piece. Um, 
you see me right there working a little with the uh, Sigma Micron. I did cheat and used um, one of my sepia fine liner pens and also right there the white gel pen. Um, I just needed them <laughs> for the final layer. Uh, but other than that, I used only the stuff in the kit. Okay, so there's my little finished piece. Um, it was challenging for me. <laughs> Um, I've never actually used uh, water-based markers. I use alcohol markers and I know how to use those and blend those and everything. Um, but I've never actually used water-based markers. I mean, other than like Crayolas back when I was a kid. So it was a little bit of a learning process for me. Um, this ink was really fun. It was fun for doing washes. I did cheat a little bit. I'm sure you saw and I used um, my uh, Uniball Signo white gel pen and a Micron, the 01 Micron in sepia. Um, but everything else was just what came in the sketch box. And I'm going to do the tape peel now. We'll see if the paper held up to the water because I, I did end up doing a few um, layers of washes. Seems like it's a little buckled, but it held up pretty well. So there's my little spring chick. <laughs> using the April Sketchbox kit with these supplies in it, plus, plus the little pad of paper. That was actually a lot of fun, and it challenged me to learn a new supply that I've never used before, and it was um, really interesting to figure out how to use them. Um, I will have to do a little bit more playing with the water-based markers, and, um, I'm not sure if I use them the way you're supposed to. I sort of, like I said, sort of treated them like watercolor, although there are a few places where I went in directly with the marker. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed it very much and I'm looking forward to seeing what's in next month's sketch box. So thanks so much for being here with me today. If you haven't hit the like and subscribe button yet, uh, please do so down below. It helps to support my channel. Um, and until next time, happy creating!